So today I'm talking about a P0026 code, what it is and how you could go about fixing it. And so what is a P0026 code? Well, it's intake valve control solenoid circuit range performance bank one. And so what does this mean? Well, basically modern vehicles have what's called variable valve timing. And this is a good system. It can give better horsepower at different RPMs. It allows the engine to get better gas mileage and things along these lines. But when you get this P0026 code, the computer's seeing a problem with the variable valve timing on bank one side of the engine. And so it's going to be troubleshooted to know why. And if you have a V6 or V8 engine, there's going to be two banks on the engine. Bank one is always the side of the engine with the number one cylinder. So if you Google your engine and like cylinder location or firing order or something like that, and you locate the number one cylinder on your engine, since there is differences, then that side of the engine is going to be bank one. And the opposite of that would be bank two. If you have a four cylinder engine, then there'll only be one bank. And you know, one thing to note about these variable valve timing systems is that depending on the manufacturer, they can be named differently. They can be designed differently. It can even be the same manufacturer, but different years can be designed differently. So if you do go to work on your vehicle, it's a good idea to get a diagram for that specific vehicle of the variable valve timing. That way you know for sure what's going on. And so what would be some possible causes of a P0026 code? Well, the first thing that could cause this is low or dirty engine oil. Basically, oil flows through this whole variable valve timing system. And so if the oil's low or if it's really dirty, that can really mess it up. That can cause issues. So first thing to do, go check your engine oil. Be sure it's not low or really dirty. The next thing that could cause this is a bad variable valve timing solenoid. And basically, each cam is going to have this solenoid that's controlling how much oil is going to an actuator that's located right on the front of the cam. And this is how the computer adjusts the timing. So if that VVT solenoid goes bad on bank one side of the engine, then that's going to cause problems. There's some different ways to go about testing these solenoids. If you have a multimeter, you can't set it to ohms. You can go and check the windings that's inside that solenoid and be sure they're good. You can look up what the rated ohms is supposed to be for that specific solenoid and see if they fall inside that range. And if they don't, then you know it's bad. You know there's some kind of issue there. These solenoids usually have 12 volts going to them. Again, be sure to verify that for your specific vehicle. But it is common for 12 volts to be going to these. So some people use a jumper. They'll send 12 volts to it. And then they'll listen to see if it clicks. And if it does click, that usually means it's working. So there's some different ways to go about testing those solenoids. But the next thing that could cause this is a bad variable valve timing solenoid. And the next thing that could cause this is a bad oil pressure switch. And don't get this mixed up with the engine oil pressure switch which is going to be separate. Some variable valve timing systems, depending on the year, they'll have these oil pressure switches, which are usually located right next to the solenoid. And this is how the computer is controlling that solenoid and the oil flow and the oil pressure and everything. And this is very common in like 2001 to 2010 Subarus, some Nissans, different things like that. So if you do have a 2000 Subaru, be on the lookout for this oil pressure switch that's going to be controlling this variable valve timing solenoid. Subaru in the 2000 engines, they named their system variable valve lift. But basically some vehicles have this oil pressure switch. But the next thing that could cause this is a bad oil pressure switch. And the last thing on the list is going to be that there's some kind of wiring issue going on inside the system. Basically keep in mind that there's any kind of open, there's a short, there's a blown fuse, something along those lines, then that's going to cause problems. So if you go through and you test these other components and they all test good, then the next thing to do is to get a wiring schematic for your particular vehicle and go and check and be sure there's no issues going on because the last thing that can cause this is some kind of wiring problem. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P0026 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.